making plans for night you This boy is electric Happy New Year everyone it's the beginning of January 2026, time to give you an update, a bumper update of how we got on in December, the end of year stats and also stats from my daughter's configuration. It's a beautiful morning this morning, lovely blue sky, intermittent with snow showers. Taking a risk with our Mobot, not putting it away over winter and hoping that it survives the cold and the snow in its little protective cover. And how are the garden solar panels doing? Almost looks like bird poo over them, isn't it? But it's just snow. It's handy having these in the garden because I can now take a closer look at what actually happens. So you can see the snow on them. But uh, as soon as they start generating a little bit, there'll actually be some heat generated and it'll melt all off. So it's very interesting to see them in the different, different lights and angles and see what's actually happening with the panels. So I've been fascinated having them in the garden, being able to get close up to them. Anyway, less of this winter update, which isn't so bad. Everyone keeps saying I should buy some of this field and put some solar panels in it. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? A few megawatt of uh, solar panels. Anyway, less of this and more of the stats. Here we go. How did we get on in December 2025 and how did the year end for us? Well, the first thing to say is what a year 2025 was with so many record months within it. Huge amounts of solar energy, so much so that we generated 11.2 megawatt hours. Compare that to last year, 8.47, the year before, 8.55, and 2022, 9.19. So 11.2 is just massively more than any other year partly because we've had the garden solar panels installed, but partly because it was such a good solar year. The extra solar generation and the increased usage of battery storage to export has meant we've massively increased the amount of export this year. Last year, we exported 7,330 kilowatt hours. This year, 11,342, a massive increase. Yet import from the grid in 2024 was 7,002 kilowatt hours. This year, 2025, 7,200. Very, very similar. So our usage is the same. Our export and generation have both massively increased this year. December's generation, though, has been very interesting. 305 kilowatt hours, it says here. This is the value from Home Assistant. And it doesn't look too bad. Quite a few days around 20 kilowatt hours. Quite a few days with hardly anything with bad weather. To be expected. What is 305 kilowatt hours? How does that compare? Comparing to previous Decembers, we can see that actually December 2025 has been the best one ever. The previous high just for our 3.9 kilowatt solace array was 130 kilowatt hours. We beat that 145 kilowatt hours. So that's a good 10% more. And it's the same for the other arrays. Plus, we've added more solar arrays in that time. So 304 is a new record. But equally, 304 is the worst month we've had this year. So December has been the best and the worst at the same time. I do enjoy looking at a graph from a different perspective. So looking at the same December generation data of 304.6 kilowatt hours on the very right hand side of this graph, you can clearly see that it is the lowest of the year in 2025. But it's also a little bit more than some Novembers in previous years, which emphasizes how good this December really was. So anyway, 306 puts it in perspective that it's the lowest of the year and it is tiny compared to the summer generation. The breakdown for that are gable and garage solar panels, 39.1 kilowatt hours. The garden solar array, a 2.4 kilowatt array, was just 37 kilowatt hours. The main array, 3.9 kilowatts with the 3.68 kilowatt solace inverter, 145 kilowatt hours, peaking at just over 10 kilowatts. And lastly, our solar edge array, 2.4 kilowatts again with a 2 kilowatt solar edge inverter, 83.3 kilowatt hours. Something I'm finding interesting in the winter is the difference it makes in solar generation. So this array, our 3.68 kilowatt array, peaking at just over 2.5 kilowatts. So well down from the 3.68 kilowatt maximum that we normally see in spring and summer. 
Our solar edge array again on the roof, south mounted, the same as the 3.68 kilowatt array. It's 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels, but it's only peaking at 1500 watts. So again, a huge reduction because it's December because of the low sun. The 2.4 kilowatts of solar panels we've got in the garden make an excellent comparison, though, to the solar edge array because it's the same 2.4 kilowatts of panels, but ground mounted. What we have in the winter is the sun is so low, it's actually casting a shadow from the panels onto the panels behind, as you can see in this image here. So we're generating a lot less. Instead of 1,500 watts, 1,000 watts was the most we saw in December. Mostly 800 watts, if we're lucky, on these garden solar panels. The three panels, 330 watts each, so a total of 1.1 kilowatts. They always surprise me on the garage that they do quite well. So even in winter, look, we're generating, what, nearly 800 watts. Call it 700, 750 watts from a 1.1 kilowatt array. I'm always really impressed with those three panels. That was a good decision, adding three panels to the garage. And the last array, the four panels on the gable wall facing east, uh, mounted 90 degrees. That's getting the worst because the sun isn't rising in the east anymore, so we're getting no sunlight on them. The sun is almost rising in the south where we are, so just a couple of hundred watts, 300 watts is about the peak that we're getting on that array. So it does well in the spring and summer, but uh, you get to winter and not very well at all. But 200 watts, 300 watts, some days you'll take that. Looking at our total solar generation, the peak is just over 6 kilowatts. When you compare that to the spring and summer, when we're generating over 10 kilowatts, you can really see the impact from 10 kilowatts down to 6 as a peak in winter. This is where I have to remind myself, though, it all sounds so bad, doesn't it? Winter generation and not generating a lot. We still generated 304.6 kilowatt hours in December. 300 kilowatt hours. I always say we only need 500 to survive. So we've done exceptionally well, even in the depths of winter. So how have we done? 845 kilowatt hours imported in December at a cost of £74.22. We exported 506 kilowatt hours, and that's at 15 pence a kilowatt hour. So we had a credit of 75.91. Hang on a minute. 74.22 as a cost, 75.91 as a credit. That's £1.69 credit for the month of December. A first. We've actually had a credit in December. That tells me that at this level of export from the battery, we could have a credit every single month of the year every single month where I plan to only have credits in the summer and pay for the winter bills. We've got no winter bills at all with this level of battery export. Battery usage then, this is our Victron inverter controlling about 30 kilowatt hours of Pylon Tech batteries. We went down to 20% in the first couple of days of December. Other than that, 30 or 40% is all we went down to. So our battery usage is remaining quite good. We're not using all of the capacity, and yet we're still uh, exporting enough to get a credit for the month. This chart shows it a little bit better with the lines rather than the blocks, I think. Moving on to something completely different now, temperatures. This chart, I think, tells a nice little story. The pink line at the bottom is showing the loft temperature as close as possible to the outside temperature, somewhere between 3 and 4 degrees and about 12 degrees over the month. But what's interesting is the comparison to the dark blue line above. That's our lounge temperature going up to 25 degrees some days. We've had it quite warm in there. And then the hall we have the doors open between the lounge, the hall, and the kitchen. So you can see that the hall is quite warm as well, but not as warm as the lounge. And the kitchen, which has no heating at all, this is the light blue line in the middle, no heating at all, and yet it's still a very, very comfortable temperature. And the heat goes through into the room. So it's working very, very well for us, not having a radiator in the kitchen, which does surprise me. But all it takes is leaving the door open. On to energy usage then. We used 54.5 kilowatt hours into the eddy for heating our hot water, 189.6 kilowatt hours into the Zappi to charge our electric car, the Kia Soul, and 753.2 kilowatt hours for the house, which does include charging the home storage battery. Rather than showing you the individual usage for the month of December, I thought this time I would share the number of kilowatt hours per individual device for the entire year. 
So starting from the top with the highest usage device, that's the Zappi charging our electric car, 2,074 kilowatt hours. Toshiba air conditioning, that's heating and cooling in the summer, 1,003 kilowatt hours. The kitchen sockets, washing machine oven, 655. The Eddy heating a hot water, 585. The television, can you believe, 242 kilowatt hours. Let's skip over the Mixigy numbers because they're actually incorrect. The main induction hob, 184 kilowatt hours. The ensuite radiator heater, 172 kilowatt hours. Heating the hot water from solar, that's the top ups during the day, 166 kilowatt hours. Our internet hubs and routers, 163 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom radiator, 146 kilowatt hours. The cloakroom infrared radiator, 78. The Zappi from solar, I hardly ever charge from solar now, 56 kilowatt hours. The laundry drying clothing indoors that's 26 kilowatt hours the guest radiator 27 kilowatt hours we don't have guests very often the bathroom radiator 13 the yucca mower 11 kilowatt hours so you can see we're down to the very very low levels now dehumidifier it's been a really good year for humidity just six kilowatt hours for the year but how did we get on with my daughter's new solar install that we've recently done with heatable 5.5 kilowatts of rear solar panels on her roof? How has that got on? Installed and working fully on the 9th of December, it generated 106.1 kilowatt hours. So pro rata that out for the entire month if it had been installed and ready on the 1st of December, that would be 149 kilowatt hours. 106 kilowatt hours, that's not too bad at all, especially considering the first month of generation, as you can see here, was less because we had the scaffolding still up. And as soon as you take that down, you get a little bit more generation. But compared to one of my solar arrays, my 3.9 kilowatt array, compared to my daughter's 5.5, I'm generating 145. With a smaller array, she's generating about 149 kilowatt hours. My daughter's install has more obstacles, more houses close by and also some trees in the back garden that are giving some quite significant shade. The 14 kilowatt hour Alpha ESS battery that we installed, that's been doing quite well as well. It's been discharging, I don't know, uh, 10, 12 kilowatt hours a day, reducing her bills. The state of charge, we've been charging it fully some days, not others. And it's run out of charge on just three days. So we've done quite well sizing it for December and it only ran out for three days. My daughter consumes more energy at her house than we do, nine and a half megawatt hours for 2025. But as you can see, the annual bill, two and a half thousand pounds roughly, and December has massively reduced. This bodes well for the rest of the year. If December is this good, then the rest of the year is going to be even better. Her bill for December, £103, but if we pro rata that out, that should be about £80. This gives six and a half year payback. That's the estimate at month one. And unbelievably, I can finish this video uh, one hour after doing the introduction. This is the scenes in Norfolk. Uh, it started snowing quite heavily, covered the solar panels, no generation whatsoever. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to leave me a comment down below. Thanks again. See you again soon. Bye for now.